So let's say you have some processes running and all of a sudden you realize that the process that you're running you really don't want to have running. Perhaps it started doing something wrong. And if it's running in the background, there's really no way of interacting with it and causing it to stop. At least not in the usual sense. Or perhaps you are the super user on your current Unix system and perhaps somebody's terminal has locked up. It's no longer responding to keyboard input. So all the processes that, that, that they have running can't be stopped. And because you're the super user, you have got permission to stop their processes. That's what this module is about, how to stop processes if you don't wish them to be running anymore. Now, all of this is done quite simply using the kill program. And it's used as follows. You simply type in KIWL followed by the process ID that you want to kill. Note that it is not possible to do something like kill space ls because you may have several ls's running and the entire system probably does have several ls's running and you need to exactly specify which one. All process IDs are unique so specifying a process ID uniquely specifies which process it is that you want to kill. For example, you might find out that the process ID that you want to kill is 12548 and so you simply kill 12548. Let's have a look at that as an example. Now I'll run my little ps command and I'll find out that the sleep that I started is actually still running. It is actually less than an hour ago for me that I started that program so I'm now going to kill it. Type in kill and then 16976 and press enter and it's gone away and I get a little message on the screen that uh, I, it has been terminated. Terminated means it did not end in its normal way. That's just a little advisory message from the shell, the shell that actually started that process. To prove that it's no longer running I type in PS again and of course it's gone. So let's mention some uh, little things that you should keep in mind about using kill. The first of these is if a program hasn't been designed particularly thoroughly from a programmer's point of view, then killing the program or aborting its execution in the middle of its running could produce unexpected results. It might be in the middle of, say, updating a database table or something like that, and if you kill it, the database could then become corrupt or inconsistent. And such problems can be notoriously difficult to solve once they've crept in. I'm saying this because I simply recommend that you don't use kill in a wanton manner. If you need to terminate a process, try terminating it in the usual way first. Try all the methods at your disposal before you resort to kill. Something else to keep in mind, the kill program cannot be used to kill processes that you do not have permission to kill. In other words, let's see if I can try and kill the process of somebody else on our system. Have a look at this. I'll now do a ps minus u Sartori, that was a user that was logged onto the system before and they're still logged on. So now I will kill, or at least attempt to kill, one of their processes. How about 16187? That's one of their shells. And I'm not allowed to kill it because I'm not the owner of that process. If I was the super user, or root, then I would be allowed to do that. Obviously I'd also be allowed to do that if I was the Sartori user. Finally, some processes are actually deliberately programmed to ignore attempts to kill them. I'm not saying that this is a good design trait, but simply that if you attempt to kill a process, it might not work. If you kill it, it just simply might not die. You can run your little kill program and then keep running PS for a few seconds or minutes afterwards and find that it's still there. Some processes do take a few seconds before they eventually die and that's normal and nothing to worry about. So if you kill a process just wait maybe five or ten seconds before you make up your mind that it's not dying. And if it's really not dying and you're certain that it's just going to stay there and you really need it to die then you can use the following. It's sort of a last ditch attempt to make it die kill minus 9 of the process ID. So it's a special option, it's minus 9. 
If you want to be technical, it sends a signal number 9 to the process and no program can be designed to ignore the 9 signal. So that is your best attempt at killing a process, but I really, really strongly urge that you don't use that unless you absolutely have to. Try the normal kill mechanisms first. The reason being that some processes, when they receive a regular kill request, they go, oh, OK, it's uh, somebody wants me to shut down now, so I'll just do all my regular housekeeping, I'll log off the database, I'll finish the transaction I'm in the middle of, I'll remove all my log files, and so on. And they leave the system in a non-corrupt and consistent state. But if you kill them with a minus 9, they just die. They abort in the middle of whatever they were attempting to do. And as such, it's unwise to do that.